Today we're taking a look at the alternate version of exercise 7-1 found on page 341 of the textbook. This is from chapter 7 on reporting and analyzing receivables. This problem here deals with account receivables, subsidiary ledgers, and schedule of accounts receivable. So let's take a look at the data. It says Veo Company recorded the following selected transactions during November of 2015. So we see they had several sales and all these sales were on account. They were credit sales. They didn't collect cash for them. There's one transaction that a customer bought some merchandise and returned that merchandise. And then the last transaction is also a sale on credit. We're asked to prepare a general ledger having T accounts for account receivables, sales, and sales returns and allowances. We're also asked to open up an account receivable subsidiary ledger having T accounts for each customer. And we're going to post these entries to both the general ledger and the account receivable ledger. So let's get started. So here we have all the information again from the previous slide. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our three T accounts, the account receivables T account, sales T account, and sales returns and allowance, which is a contra account to sales account. So remember, when we record sales, we record sales with a debit entry or a credit entry. Which one is it? Hopefully you said credit entry and a nice handy little tool to remember that in memory aid is that you take credit for good things like sales. So sales get credited, you take credit for good things like sales. Well if a customer returns something, we're going to be lowering those sales and we don't lower the sales T account with a debit. Instead we keep track of all those returns by debiting this special account, this contra account called sales returns and allowances. Then in our income statement, sales less sales returns and allowances will equal the company's net sales for the period. So let's take a look at our first transaction. It says uh, on November the 5th, there was a sale of $4,554 to the customer, the ski shop. And we sold that material to them on credit. So we're going to first debit our account receivables, assets. Those are our debit accounts. We debit assets. Why? Because they have a left hand balance and left in the world of accounting means one thing and one thing only. Left means debit. So whenever we sell something on credit, we debit the account receivable account. And then the offsetting entry, the credit part, we're going to credit directly to sales. So we debit account receivables and we credit sales. And then we want to go ahead and post this information to that subsidiary ledger right away. That subsidiary ledger is just a tracking device that says for this particular customer, how much does this customer owe us? So we're going to put down on this customer's account records that they owe us a balance of $4,554. Okay, so with that we finished the November the 5th transaction. Time to move on to November the 10th transaction where another sale occurred in the amount of $2,881. This was a sale that was on credit and how we know that is because we didn't collect cash for the sale. Instead, there was an account receivable created and this sale was to the entity called Welcome Enterprises. So just like we did for the ski shop, let's post this transaction to our T accounts. First, what are we going to debit? Hopefully you said debit account receivables. Debit account receivables for the 2881 and what account will get the credit? Well, hopefully you said the sales account. So we're going to credit sales for November the 10th, 2881. And we're finished, right? No, we're not finished. We have to do what else? We need to update Welcome Enterprises subsidiary account. So let's go ahead and open up the subsidiary account for Welcome Enterprises. And that's post with a debit as well for the amount that Welcome Enterprises owes us as a result of the November the 10th transaction. And that is $2,881. Okay, kind of getting the hang of it now. Let's move on to November the 13th transaction. What two accounts are going to be involved here? Well, we're going to debit account receivables. So let's debit the account receivables for this sale of $1,689. Credit the sales account. Remember, take credit for good things like sales. So credit the sales account for $1,689. And then the last thing we need to do is do what? Well, this customer, Zia Natara, has a subsidiary ledger that has to be updated as well, showing that that company made a purchase of $1,689. Perfect. So let's move on then to November the 21st transaction. Well, what happened here? Well, it looks like the customer, 
Zia Natara made a return. So they returned $436 worth of merchandise. Remember, that's lowering sales, but we're going to keep track of this amount, not in the sales account directly. We're not going to debit sales for the amount of the return. Instead, we're going to debit what? Debit the Contra account called Sales Returns and Allowances. So the Contra account gets debited for $436. And what's going to be the offsetting entry? Do we do anything to sales here? No, we don't do anything to sales. We need to lower our outstanding account receivable balances by the amount of the return, $436. And we're finished, right? Uh, is Zia Natara's account records the subsidiary ledger, is that correct for us? Well, no, we have to show that they return $436 of the merchandise. So let's post that to the subsidiary ledger as well. Okay, good job on that one. And let's move on to the very last one, November the 30th. Another sales transaction on account. This was to the ski shop for $6,006. So what will be the two accounts involved in posting this entry? Account receivables. We're going to debit that for 6006 and we'll credit sales for 6006 And we're finished, right? Oh, no, we're not. We have to update the subsidiary ledger also for 6006 Well, now that we've posted all the transactions, it's time to foot each of the accounts. Just total them up. So we're going to total all of the debit side, total all the credit side, Subtract the smaller number from the larger number, and that will be the ending account balance. For asset accounts, they typically have an ending debit balance. Sales will have a typically an ending credit balance, return, a debit balance, and all of these subsidiary ledgers normally will have a normal ending debit balance as well, unless the customer is overpaid and they're carrying a credit balance. So let's go ahead and foot each of these T accounts. For account receivables, we're going to total up all of the debits, Total up all the credits, subtract the smaller from the larger, and our balance is $14,694. There are no debits for sales, so when we foot this, we're just simply going to total all the credit entries, and we'll have total sales of $15,130. Foot the sales returns and allowance account, just one entry for $436 as a debit balance. Remember, this debit balance is offsetting this credit balance, so we'll net these two numbers together, and we'll have a net sales for the period. Let's foot the ski shop, total those up, and we have a debit balance of 10560 that the ski shop owes us. Move on to Welcome Enterprises, 2881, and then for Zia Nartara, foot that. We're going to take the smaller balance, away from the larger balance and that leaves a debit balance of $1,253. Okay, so that finishes up the first part. Let's move on to the next part of the problem. In the next part of the problem we're asked to prepare a schedule of account receivables. So remember we have those three customers. Their balances collectively total $14,694. These were their individual subsidiary ledgers that we saw from the previous slide. And now we're just going to detail these out on one schedule of account receivables. So we'll list each customer's name and the balance that customer owes. The next company, Welcome Enterprises, and its balance. Finally, Zia Notara and Zia's balance. And then we'll total these up and our total schedule of account receivables of $14,694 equal indeed the amount that we'll list on the balance sheet of 14694 And that concludes how to solve exercise 7-1, account receivable subsidiary ledger and schedule of accounts receivable.